I'm sure by now you've probably heard about The Hero's Journey, popularized by Joseph Campbell. And if you haven't, go check out my video on The Hero's Journey and we'll meet you back here. But what many people don't often talk about is the anti-hero's journey. Have you ever wondered what purpose the villain plays in storytelling or even more importantly, in our own lives? Why at times we empathize with certain villains yet completely despise another? Now, in this short documentary, we will be exploring the crucial role that villains play in the human narrative and how to better understand our own dark side. This is the anti-hero's journey. Before we begin, let us quickly flip the coin and focus on the hero's journey for a moment. In a nutshell, the hero's purpose in mythology is to sacrifice themselves for the greater good. This often means fighting evil, protecting the innocent, and basically becoming an adult, right? Separating from the mother, leaving your ordinary world, going to the special world, and bringing back the elixir of knowledge to your homies. Going full circle and developing your character arc. Some of the more developed hero traits include nobility, courage, humility, and higher nature dominance. Some examples of popular heroes in our modern culture include Spider-Man, Iron Man, Superman, Batman, Ant-Man, Radioactive Man, Goku. And while the hero's journey usually consists of separation, initiation, integration, and rebirth, the villain's journey consists of attachment, regression, alienation, and death. Some of my personal favorite villains include Thanos, Joker, Voldemort, Loki, and Vegeta. These are the rejected anti-heroes that usually represent the main hero's adversary. The villain represents the personified shadow that the hero has rejected within themselves. And a huge mistake that we make is that we completely deny these traits within ourselves, which ends up biting us in the ass in the long run. Even if you're completely disgusted by someone's actions, it's important to acknowledge them as a human being and recognize those traits within yourself. And think about it, if you were born in someone else's shoes, how do you know that your life wouldn't unfold itself the exact same way that theirs did? You never know, so you might as well try to understand their situation. Shaming and blaming individuals only fuels the fire and causes the shadow to backlash even more, like a demon baby screaming to be heard. This doesn't mean that we should accept evil by any means. That is exactly how evil people take advantage and prey on good-natured people. You cannot afford to be naive about this aspect of humanity. This is how people get seriously hurt and killed in the long run. So let me make it clear that evil is very real. There is no joke about it. If left unchecked, monsters can grow and terrorize humanity, which has happened over and over again in history. Like your Hitlers, your Stalins, and your Kangas Khans. And this is exactly why we need to understand this repressed part of the collective unconscious. Something that we all share. Showing nothing but hate and lacking that empathy will only feed the monster within us. So I think it's important to learn about the villain archetype and see what this says about humanity. So these are common values that many famous villains lean towards. In many cases represent the extreme negative side of polarity. And this is why villains, generally speaking, lean more towards the route of anti-God, anti-nature and anti-life. They go more towards the shadow side they give in to their impulses. They're using their lower carnal nature rather than their higher nature. <laughs> and yeah, it's true. Some villains do have a good point and they might even have good intentions like Thanos wanting to kill half the population for ultimately reducing suffering. But whenever you try to play God and impose your will at the expense of others, it never ends up going well for you. I am inevitable. Villains aren't always evil per se, just opposite. They conflict and oppose the main hero's values. And even though there are literal external villains in the world, 
there is always an internal villain that can manifest itself in the form of fear, greed, power. This often projects itself onto the world which attracts certain characters into your life and it does this so that you can hopefully integrate that aspect of yourself and finally be at peace and then you will no longer attract those people in your life. It's about tying loose ends and healing the unconscious parts of yourself that you've repressed. Even though there are many different types of villains out there, I would like to share just a couple with you guys. Types of villains include the tyrant, the diabolical schemer, dark trickster archetype that is just pure chaos and does whatever it wants just because, ha ha ha. There's the evil genius slash mad scientist. There's the fanatic, which is a bad guy that genuinely believes that he's a good guy doing the best for humanity. And there's the scariest type of villain, which is the devil. It's basically pure evil personified. So as you can see, there are many different shades of what makes a villain a villain. Not all villains are evil per se. However, it is very common for villains to turn into monsters eventually. And yeah, sure, some villains can end up turning good, but it really depends on the type of villain. If we're talking about the personification of evil, like the Joker, for example, who has said himself that he's an antidote of chaos. He knows what he's doing is wrong, but he wants to spread suffering just for the sake of spreading suffering. He wants to prove to humanity that we're really evil deep down and we're just one bad day away from it. And some common factors which can cause some villains to turn into monsters includes isolation and rejection, victims of abuse, a poor philosophical foundation, giving into their impulses and going the unconscious dark route. And if you really want to learn more about how a villain is created, go watch Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. This is a brilliant character study of a man slowly descending into madness and becoming one of the most iconic villains in modern culture. And one of the key features of what makes a villain a villain is that unlike the hero who sacrifices themselves for the greater good, villain sacrifices others for their own needs and desires. What is the purpose of the villain though? Is it really just to spread havoc and evil into the world? There are a few reasons why villains play such a vital role in storytelling. Number one, to challenge and help bring out that goodness within the hero, bringing them transformation and knowledge, which helps them integrate their dark side. Number two, they challenge our beliefs and morals. Villains can speak very harsh truths that most people don't even want to consider for a second, as it can bring up very painful emotions and realizations about the world. I try to show the schemers how pathetic their attempts to control things really are. It can be really difficult acknowledging certain horrific aspects of reality that could shatter your world in a million pieces. And sometimes it can get so bad that it's like in the matrix when people get unplugged prematurely and they die because they just weren't ready. And another purpose of the villain, and it may not be an overly compelling reason, but it creates a more entertaining story, at least in creative media. However, in real life, it's not always cool. I mean, yeah, sure, villains like Loki and Thanos may be charismatic and even relatable in some ways. But when you translate that into the real world, where you've got evil people killing, raping and controlling the world behind the scenes, it's a lot more serious. Villains should never get a pass for their actions just because we acknowledge and empathize with the evil side of our psyche. In extreme situations, of course, we should always fight evil. But if it's out of a place of reactivity, hate, and ignorance, and a fuck you attitude, then it'd be like cutting off a head of a hydra just for three more to appear. You gotta do it from a more understanding, loving place. And that brings me to a very important point, and that is to never attack the character, but the action and the force behind it. In other words, never blame evil people for what they do, but try to understand evil itself. Try to understand the underlying causes of these actions that manifest in the world. Then to be fair, not everyone has to necessarily integrate evil in its entirety. However, it can be wise to at least understand it and try to have compassion to even those that appear to be pure evil. This will greatly help you integrate your dark side and eventually help you transcend the whole hero's journey model. Understanding your shadow counterpart, which are depicted as villains in mythology, 
will help you progress through your own character arc and you will be wiser for it. Knowing your villain really helps you see the blind spots, the chinks in your armor so to speak. Unfortunately evil does exist, but if we're actively quote unquote fighting it without honestly looking at ourselves first, we will only feed the vicious cycle of good versus evil for eternity and it will be self-inflicted. Our very strength invites challenge. Challenge incites conflict. Conflict breeds catastrophe. In every hero's story arc, there always comes a time when you realize that your quote-unquote good intentions was only creating stronger monsters, right? It's like almost nature counterbalancing itself with an antibody. The very concept of a hero will always imply a villain. Not only in the real world, but it also manifests within the human psyche itself as the shadow. However, just like evolution, you cannot skip a stage without severe consequences. The hero's journey represents the psychological narrative of human development. But just like any cycle of development, it can only take you so far until you are required to move into the next level. A more wiser magician mentor leaning archetype. The anti-hero or villain within your own mind is the final frontier of the hero's journey. Most will never complete it and many don't even start the hero's journey to begin with. They never really answer that call to adventure. Integrating your dark side is an excruciatingly painful journey if you face it unprepared. Honor and respect the stage you are at and try to enjoy the process all the way through. Cultivate your heroic traits like courage, purpose, nobility, and more importantly, sacrificing yourself for the greater good. And this all requires walking the hero's path and doing what you have to do, learning what you need to learn and moving on when you have to move on. Life is always going to present challenges specifically tailored to your individual needs. The more you grow as a human, the more life will turn up the difficulty according to your state of consciousness. Sort of like a video game when you gain experience and skill points, the enemies start to become stronger until you reach a boss battle. And then when you defeat that boss, you level up and move on to the next stage to fight even stronger bosses until you're finally ready to face the end game boss. And in life, adversity may manifest itself as negative thoughts, impulses, resistance, which can later progress into a life crisis, sickness, mental health problems, family death, etc. But eventually you realize that the villain that you've been fighting your whole life has been you. You realize that you've been repressing and even provoking your shadow in unconscious ways, especially by blaming everyone else. And when you realize that this has been the root cause of most of your suffering, you claim your power back and are able to integrate your shadow until it comes back more developed. But at this stage, you'll learn to be more loving towards yourself. Even the ugly parts you've rejected. Good and evil are two sides of the same coin. As it states in the Kabbalion, opposites are identical by nature, but different in degrees. Pairs of opposites exist everywhere. And by understanding this principle, one may transmute any negative emotional state into its counterpart. So don't lose hope. The tendency of nature goes towards the dominant activity of the positive pole, towards life, knowledge, light and expansion. This is why darkness cannot touch light in the same way light can dominate darkness. But if we swing the pendulum with too much force, even if it's towards the positive end of polarity, the pendulum will eventually swing backwards, just like the shadow when you deny it. The key is being aware of both sides of polarity and reconciling the opposites. This will expand your tool belt and help you walk a more harmonized path. Making you a wiser, vigilant person that possesses the power of mental transmutation. Transforming evil into good, fear into courage, unconsciousness into consciousness, shadow into light. And this all starts with knowing thyself. So you got to ask yourself, will you choose knowledge or ignorance? The choice is yours. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you got some value out of this and learnt a little bit more about the anti-hero's journey. I think this is a very important topic that 
many people shy away from, especially when it has anything to do with integrating your dark side. And I get why we shy away from this, but at the same time, we gotta think about the collective here and the damage we are doing by just denying it and ignoring certain aspects of reality that makes us feel uncomfortable. Man, this is actually a really interesting year for me to upload this video, you know, 2020. Hopefully when you watch this video from five years in the future, you're gonna look back and be like, whoa, some crazy shit went down. And yeah, I think, I think it will, it already is. My country is literally on fire right now. I can smell the bushfires from my window. Anyways, I'm going on a tangent, but you know, it's just funny looking back on this channel and seeing how my very first proper video was about the hero's journey. And I know that I've been super slack on this channel, not really uploading, but all my time and resources have been in going into my main channel, Your Mate Tom. But I do want to make more videos on this channel. So if you enjoyed this video, got any value out of it and wish to see more like this, then feel free to check out our Patreon. You can join our inner circle via our exclusive Patreon server and join a group of like-minded individuals who want to help each other with self-development, growth, integration, shadow work, and all this kind of stuff. Even if it's five or 10 bucks a month, every little bit helps. As time goes on, I wanna continue making more videos on this topic of integrating your dark side as it's, it's, dude, making this video less than 15 minutes was really, really challenging. Uh, so there's so many different avenues you can go down. Man, you can make a video on like each sub archetype or even each villain, right? And their story and how it relates to humanity in real life and man, Anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop rambling now, but long story short, there is a lot of content that I can make on this topic of shadow integration. So if you did enjoy this and would like to see more, comment below, share it with a friend, support us on Patreon or PayPal or merch, whatever you gotta do, it's all good. Love you guys, catch you in the next video. Peace.